What is up guys, Zach in here and in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the hottest virtual wholesaling markets in the United States of America. And most importantly, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the best zip codes and areas in those markets so you can actually have the best access so you can be pinpointed for the right wholesaling real estate market so you know exactly where to go after. I think a lot of people out here, you know, they do the best marketing out here, right? They do the best tactic to try to find a really good wholesaling real estate deal, but they ultimately come short because they're in the wrong market or the worst case scenario, the, honestly, the worst thing I've seen is they are in the perfect market, but they're not doing as well as they should. Maybe they're getting one deal a month, but they could be getting three deals a month. Not if it's not because they need to work harder, but they just need to change where they're marketing, not even the script, it's just where they're going. And that can actually triple their results, guys. The reason I'm making this video is because when I started on wholesaling real estate, I started scaling up my wholesaling real estate operation. I figured out pretty quick when I looked at my first 50 deals that I would probably would say 80%. So this is called the 80-20 rule. I want you guys to know this. 80% of all my wholesaling deals were only in 20% of the zip codes in my city. In Port St. Lucie, I think there's 13, 14 zip codes, about three or four zip codes. That's where 80% of my deals were. That being said, and after doing virtual wholesaling and studying everyone, doing a lot of great wholesaling markets, I figured out very quick, very fast, that most wholesaling deals are only going to be done in 20% of zip codes in every single city. Uh, that's good for wholesaling real estate. So the question is, I mean, two main questions we're going to answer today is how do I find the top cities, counties, city zip? And most importantly, how do I find the best areas in those cities? So I'm excited for this one. I know I'm going to help a lot of people out. I know a lot of people had questions about this today. Uh, they want me to share it today. So I'm excited. So before I get into it, do me a big favor. Make sure you guys hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and always comment below your questions. And I'm here to help you become the best wholesaler possible. I'm excited. You can get into wholesaling real estate with no money. This is the reason why I'm giving everything to you for no money because you can start with no money. I'm going to give it for no money so you have all the tools to rise yourself up and become the best entrepreneur wholesaler possible. So let's get into it. Let's cut the fluff today and let's get into exactly how to find the best market wholesaling real estate so you can have the best set pop. But let's get into it and let's really share everything. So we're going to share today exactly how to find the hottest virtual markets and the hottest zip codes for wholesaling real estate. Now, before we break down the top zips, the top everything, if we're looking into virtual wholesaling or in just regular, like if you're just doing in your own market, this isn't going to be a bad video, honestly, but like we're going to share, first of all, the two key factors that make a quote unquote hot, hot market, right? Everyone says, oh, that's a hot market. Oh, that's a terrible market. That's a cold market. You know, my grandma said this one. My guru said this is a good market. Right, guys, I, I'm going to cut the fluff. I'm going to tell you actually what's real in wholesaling real estate so we can actually know what's legit and what's not legit. Okay. So there are two key factors when it comes to figure out if you're in a good wholesaling market or not. There's just two simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, simple key factors to simple out to make sure if you are in a really good wholesaling real estate market. So before I get into it, let's break this all down. And I want everybody to think, are you in a good market or not? Maybe the way you're thinking, if you're in a good market or not, it might be a little skewed. It might be a little off right now if exactly you are in the right market or not. A lot of people, they want to complicate it. You know, I looked at the ratio of the rents and, 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 and the for forensic analysis of this. And the honest truth is, if you look at two or three really key key factors, it's going to tell you straight up what you should be doing. So let's break down exactly what they are. So the two key factors, and I want everybody to understand this, all right? Number one is going to be population, all right? If your population in your city, county, so let's use county, for example, here, okay? If your population for your county is over 50,000, it's, it's decent enough. There, there's enough cash buyers in there that we could probably do it, right? So I'd rather be a city population over 50,000. I prefer a county population over 100,000. City, 50,000, okay? The reasoning behind this and why that would make it a hot market is because we need some population there. Okay. Now I do a lot of people send me JV deals and look at all these thinking JV deals. And some people get really, I'm just going to say this nicely, but hurt that I don't JV their amazing deal. And one guy came on the live a little upset, not, not making fun of them or anything, but like, he's like, why, why aren't you JVing my deal? I, I need to send it to you. You need to do this. And I'm like, it's a deal of a lifetime, right? The guy had a deal and it was not the best discount, but like it was in a population of literally 2000. Like, like legitimately in the county, the entire like county to county is like a 30 minute drive. The entire 30 mile radius, there's 2,000 people living in that in the place, 
and like I think 500 people in the city. If I look at 500 people, how many cash buyers are gonna be in that city? Not a lot, okay? And so we have to understand if we want a lot of cash buyers and what makes a lot of cash buyers? There are commerce, there, there has to be people looking to flip properties. If I'm gonna buy a property and flip it, there should be a family that's gonna have jobs in that economy. Like economies are kind of all over the place in the United States, but we need to have a population. That means a decent amount of people have decided, hey, we wanna live here for a certain reason. Why are there more people living in Chicago than living in Portland, Oregon? Because Chicago's got a lot bigger economy going on, okay? And I want you guys to understand, this doesn't make one city better than the other, but if you have not a lot of people living in the city, no one's gonna buy that property because they can't rent it out as well. Why well, just go to Cheyenne, Wyoming, if I'm gonna do it, versus if I'm gonna go to like, I don't know, Pocahanna, uh, Indiana, right? So guys, I want you to understand that the population needs to be over 50,000. And there, when I say that, I want you to understand this. A lot of people are like, oh, he means I need to be in Chicago. Chicago, New York, or LA, and that's the only place I should go. You know, I should go to a place that 10 million people live, right? It's gonna be a lot of buyers there, I'll tell you that. But let me give you a quick, really big secret. In the United States, according to the Census Bureau, uh, about three-ish years ago, they did a full census, two and a half, two, but they have found, and this population's only rising, but they have found over 300 urban areas with a US, in the US, that, ha oh, that have over a population of 100,000. That means there are 300, okay? So if there are 300 people watching this, live stream right now there's one area for one person watching the live stream right that's a lot and i guarantee you probably can't name all 300 i probably can't if you force me to i probably could because i have an identic memory and i like geography but it'd be very hard for me to do and for most people it'd be very very difficult right and so you're gonna have to look these things up and we're gonna show you the statistics the data all these things but like i want you guys to understand that you need some population you're not gonna have a hot wholesaling market in a population of 500 people it just ain't gonna work it's like trying to make a million dollars at a grocery store and there's only a thousand people living in there. All right, now I gotta do it with the grocery. There's gonna be people wanting to buy things. There's gotta be people living there, okay? It's gonna be very difficult to do. So just understand that we are selling deals to cash buyers and you need a lot of title companies and out of all the title companies, some are gonna have to go out here and accept wholesaling because not every title company is gonna be okay with that. We need to go through like 50 title companies and find the ones that are good for wholesaling, right? This is very important, guys. So why can't I just go after the biggest population centers and be like, hey, that's a very distinct reason. There is a Another thing, okay? We have to have at least an average ARV below four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now, this is what we call basically a Venn, a Venn diagram, okay? There's a circle here, okay? Now, there are population centers that are over a hundred thousand, and there are pieces of real estate priced under four hundred and fifty thousand. We have to get the ones that intersect in between, and so this is interesting, right? So we want our average ARV, our average median home price for the county, preferably the city, but say the county, be under four hundred and fifty thousand. The reasoning behind this is statistically with human beings sales and anything in general this is a law for human beings we're not even talking about real estate but this is just for business in general let's give a just a straight up business lesson for everybody watch the higher the price of something the less willing the seller is to take a big discount on it so let's use an example if i'm going to sell you shoes okay for 50 bucks and you ask for a let's say a 20 percent discount 10 bucks off my 50 dollars shoe you want to buy it for 40. am i going to really get offended by you doing Doing that not really and i might even take that deal it's 10 percent off okay no big deal now if i have a 10 million dollar yacht or whatever fancy guru thing they try to do let's call it a i'm feeling guru -y today okay let's call it a jet i have a 10 million dollar jet and you call me and offer to buy it for nine million dollars uh, what why would i give a million dollars off of that you've never earned anything over your life buddy rah, 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 rah. of course i would not take a million dollars off my jet why is that because Human beings never focus off the percentage off the value that you break it down by. They only focus on the amount price goes down. 10 bucks, not a big deal. A million dollars, too much. Even when you are a multimillionaire, it, it, it's too much, okay? This is why, this is why CNBC, the news media is so good on them. If the stock market goes down 1%, let's say that, uh, let, let's do this for example, okay? Let, let's do some, let's do some stats, okay? Let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, all right? So let's look at what happened uh, last week okay the dow jones industrial average is currently at 33,630 okay and it's been pretty much up since forever okay like even from 1983 right so like it's just going up okay now the dow
Dow Jones Industrial Average. All right, we're looking at this right here. All right, okay. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it was up day over day 2.13%. Oh my God. What would get bigger headlines? What would freak people out more? The Dow Jones is up 2.13% today. Whoa, that doesn't, that, that doesn't excite human beings. Your brain doesn't get jacked up for that, right? But if I told you the Dow Jones is up 700 points today, people get ex so excited. It's like, why is that so exciting? exciting 2.13% no but it's up 700 points same thing if it goes down 2% 2% is like nothing it's down 700 points oh my gosh versus if I told you it's down 2 2% oh oh 2% uh, that, that's fine right do you see the crazy like stress that does because human beings only care about the number it goes down not the percent and because we think very emotionally sometimes so I want you guys to understand that all right this is why most human beings can't have a stock chart of how much their real estate is okay because real estate will fluctuate 1 to 2% every single day forever Okay. And if you go crazy and let's say I own a $500,000 house, my house just, my net worth went up $5,000 today. It went down $5,000. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Freak you out. Okay. So I want everybody to understand that this is how human beings work. This is a fundamental sales principle that you can use for anything in life. That being said, if I have a $600,000 house, if I'm going to get 30% off of it, someone is less likely to say yes to that versus if you have a $125,000 house. So the key thing I'm trying to break down to you guys today is your average ARV has to to be below $450,000 for you to get a lot of good discounted deals. Over a long period of time to get as many discounted deals as possible, I found the average ARV should be below 350, 400, but for a general rule across the entire board, more or less 450,000. The reasoning behind this is about 89% of all counties in the United, I think there's over 3,600, 3,000, over 3,000 counties in the United States of America. And if you're international watching this, counties are basically uh, political district zones within a state. So basically how places are divided on it basically goes from base it basically goes from city county state country okay we have the united states we have new york and then we have like nassau county and then we have westchester or whatever counties in nassau county okay definitely not westchester but it, that's just basically how it works okay and so it, it that's basically how things are divided up with governments and all that's not jazz okay so now we understand that we have to find what mixes okay we so we know that 80 we have to go to the 89 percent of counties that have a AR, average area be below 89%. And then we need to go find places with high population in those counties. All we have to do. The basis on this is good discount plus good cash buyers equal money, right? Like, duh, that's how we find a good wholesaling market. Now, this seems like a crazy advanced training I'm doing today. But if you can get dis if you can find a place where you can get good discounts and you have a place where there's a lot of buyers for to buy those discounted things, you can make some moolah. All right. That is the point. No guru, no anyone, no nobody else really breaks this down or shares this because these are the secrets they hide behind a six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand, eleven thousand dollar coaching program. Get for you for free. My gurus cry every single time they watch this. They're crying more than Patriots fans today, okay? And it's just, it's sad. And we love our Patriots fans, but I have to go out after him because my heart was broken last week and the week before that, but it was a good day today. But really, the next question, this is just a string of events that people get very stressed out over, but how do I find a market like that? This is the next big question I get. Zach, how do I find a market like this? You are in a very good luck because I would say probably over half of every county in the United States is like that. There's over half. So there's plenty of US of A, baby, to go around for everybody. I, I, want, I want you guys to understand there's plenty of places for us to be wholesaling, okay? plenty. So, so don't be stressing out over it. So what I want to do is actually share my screen right now, actually show you some interesting statistics so you can see it. Now, this is when I get in nerd mode, but I want to use a little cool tool. Okay. I'm going to put it in the comments. I'm, I'm actually going to paste it in the comments. And what I want you guys to do is do it with me. And so we can actually see, so this is going to be the simplest, easiest chart to see exact, pretty simple of what my average ARV for my home price is going to be. So let's just share my screen right here. So you can absolutely see it. So this is, I put in the comments, but this is from NAR, our favorite people in the world. They are the greatest on earth. We love the National Association of Realtors. And with their millions and millions of dollars they get in, they do some research. And they got some pretty cool charts here, okay? This is basically from the Federal Housing Finance Agency. But pretty much from here, this is a map of the United States. And you know I love geography and map. I can figure out pretty quickly here, this is the average median home price per county. And as you can see here, red is more expensive. And then you go down here to uh, basically this. This takes a lot of CPU and RAM. <laughs> kind of funny, but you can click it and it'll show. So let's click here. I want to find only place in the United States that have 
and ARV, the county of below 150. 41.2% of all counties are actually in this range. Kind of crazy. The problem with this really low scale is there's not a big population center of this. There are some, but there's not a big, massive one. Okay, so let's kind of get out of that and let's kind of see. Let, let's just use an example. So let's go here to Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County is kind of on the bubble here, but 453,000. It's kind of outside the range we want. We could make it work, but that's pretty close, right? So you see that that's in the bigger orange here, okay? I would say for most people, the best bang for your buck is going to be right here, that 150 to 350. Because you got to remember, yes, I did say some bad schmack talk about how we want lower prices and high population. But when you do wholesale houses in the 150, 350 range, you make more money per deal too. There's less deals, but you make more money per deal. And this is the best range right here, 150 to 350, where you get those 50, 60 thousand dollar deals. The 350 to 550, that's when you're playing with fire. Uh, this is where I usually play with. So my actual, my home county right here, uh, St. Lucie County is about 344. That's the best sweet spot. But I'm telling you, this is where you get your 60, 70, 80, even hundred thousand dollar deals. You just gotta be a little careful here, okay? So you see this area, I think this is Den, uh, this area, Wyoming. So this area, Wyoming is like rich, I don't know, ski country. So like, this is the best range right here. So I want everyone to click on that, look at it and really just do your math here. So like you look here, we can play around and really see, right? And we can go around here. This looks like Williamson, Tennessee. It's probably Nashville region, but like this area is a little more expensive. We go a little east, we go north, we go south, we go everywhere. It's interesting, right? Ottawa County's got nothing, but like you got Livingston, you got Wish to Know. Uh, you got some interesting areas, right? Monroe, Wood County, you go here. Delaware County looks interesting, right? You got Knox County, Ohio. You got all these areas. Then you look at the population. For example, here, I got a Santa Barbara. That's pretty expensive, right? Pretty expensive, pretty expensive. That's LA County, pretty expensive. San Bernardino is a little expensive, but you can still make it work, right? And you just kind of look around here and you can really do the math. Now you got to understand one thing here. You got Clark County, 450 is decent, but like you got to make your decision from there. But like a lot of these areas you can really make work. And I want you just to see the population because I think a lot of people really think that a lot of these markets are outside their reach. And the truth is they are not. They are still within your reach. And I want you to understand that they are still in your reach in wholesaling real estate. So I want you guys to understand that don't stress out over being the perfect market. Because if you look at these two, 89% of them are, are in there. You can make them work. Now, once you start getting these areas, obviously avoiding them, but like you guys, you can make these work very well. And, and I want you guys to understand this. Like this is how make your big bucks in wholesale and real estate. Just do a little bit and get it going, right? So I I, I just, I'm just letting you guys think, think independently guys and gals, but like, oh, chair's playing with me today. But just think independently, right? If you see maps like this, you see data like this, and you're going to start understanding that like a lot of counties actually fit in this little range. And so we now we understand the price is how do I understand the populations, right? Pretty simple, right? Let, let me show you some of the population centers so we can see it. So like really quick, I'm just going to look at county population USA, right? And that, it's, so we go to census for this one, but we can actually look at population centers and then divide it from there. So let me look. So you see this, this is by population right here. So if we go here and see it, right, we, we got all the populations and all I'm going to do is just go here. And these are the biggest uh, populations in the United States. I can make a CSV, do all my fun, crazy jobs jazz but like these are populations of the millions and i can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and these are good areas for example uh horry county uh south carolina i go search that that is going to be the myrtle beach conray uh area not bad not not bad hamilton county is really good too uh stark county uh ottawa county is good they didn't have much data there was interesting but like you go there, like look at all these areas with bigger populations you just got to mix them together and you can do it so like you can go to the poorest counties in the united states right and you go with the biggest population by the poorest. There's other ways you can do it. But like Bronx County is not going to be good. But these are other areas where there's not a lot of income on here. But the problem is not big population. Now, the issue is you might be like, oh my gosh, it's going to be the best wholesaling areas ever. I'll tell you the truth. A lot of poor areas are not the best because a lot of cash buyers don't like uh, these are not huge, massive, insane. Cato Parish is actually probably the best one out of here. But areas strict on the pro poverty in the United States are actually not the best. Uh, once you get a little lower and the population goes up, it's not good. So you can use this website. It's going to give you some interesting statistics on counties in the United States. So it'll give me some more interesting data here. Uh, but you can really go through out here and, and play with it yourself. This is, I think, worldpopulationreview.com. I'll put the link in, in here for you. But like, you can go out here and look at it, like Westmore County. Let's look at that. That is going to be like out, just the area outside of Pittsburgh. 
absolutely amazing market to be going on. There's so many of these little areas that nobody, I don't think I'm the first wholesaler probably to ever talk about Westmoreland County, okay? It's just a, it's an area outside of Pittsburgh, right? And so you just got to start rethinking the way that you are going out, going after out here and finding these wholesaling deals. Because I truly believe that if you go out here and just start independently doing your own little research, like 15, 20 minutes, finding the perfect market, you'll be able to sell your deals for as much money as you possibly want to do and you do very well, right? Get the data and it will lead you to your success, right? And so that's the big part about today I, I want to talk about, right? And so the last question here is like, how do I find the best areas in those markets? What what type of areas in those markets actually give me the best results possible? Now, let's break this down and, and let's really share actually how to find the best areas uh, in those wholesaling real estate markets. So once I find the perfect market, what areas should I be going after? What, what is the perfect one? So let's break down. There's basically four ways to find, okay? Uh, oh, I just revealed that one. All right, we're fine. All right, number one, the best way to find the top zip code in your market is just ask cash buyer. This seems really crazy, really advanced and insane, but just ask your cash buyers exactly what areas you're looking to buy. I promise you, when you start asking your cash buyer these things, it, it's going to be eye-opening because a lot of people don't even ask their cash buyers. Oh, what's your criteria? And then they're like, oh, whole city. Okay, fine. Boom. Just quiz them. What areas are perfect for What areas are hottest right now? What areas are you finding the best? And you just use those areas. Because when you go back to selling your deal, if you're struggling with selling deals, you say, hey, remember you told me to get the zip code? Well, I got a deal in the zip code and you kind of make them feel bad. And now they got to buy your deal, right? It's kind of throwing them back at them, but like that's how you get your deal sold. Number two, very important. Find the cash sales per person ratio. Now there's two ways to find cash sales in the last month, two months, year in your county or your city, wherever zip code, wherever. Uh, there's two big ways, right? Number one, probably the easiest way for most people. If you have an account for zachadata.com or listrei.com, I do recommend you probably go there. It'll actually get you the cash sales. You can write it down, do your analysis for zip code. You do all that stuff. There's a list source hack, which I show for free. My free wholesaling course, freewholesaling.com. I recommend everybody watching this. Go to freewholesaling.com and you can see exactly how to do it. Uh, but find the cash sales per person ratio. So you find how many cash sales were happening in that zip code and then find how many people are living in that zip code and make a ratio. Because the, a lot of people find this, it's like looking at a crime rate. And so if you look at the crime rate, so if I look at how many, I can't say this word, but like, you know, let's say vandalism, how many vandalisms, how many acts of vandalism happen in a city? And I say, oh my gosh, there were 3000 instant incidents of vandalism in Dallas. Oh my gosh. And in my own county, there's only 50 in the last year. My city's so much safer. But if you look at it, maybe Dallas has less incidents of vandalism per thousand people than your own city and county, right? And that's a big problem. I think a lot of people have in the statistic. They look at the, just the number in general, but they don't look in general how many of something happens per person. And so this is why you think that United States is the richest country in the world. Uh, it is by the amount of sheer people and sheer economic you know, power, but the most money per person, I think it's like Luxembourg or something like that. And so you can look at it both ways. It's like, if I look at somebody and they're from this country, they're most likely to make over a hundred grand. And we go to Luxembourg, except for the United States. There's a lot of people making less than hundred K per year in the United States. Relatively, if I go to Luxembourg, not a lot of, not a lot of people in Luxembourg, like, so their economy is not big, but it's just another way to look at things, right? And so I'm just wanting everybody to understand this, to like find the cash sales per person ratio. It's going to be very big. Okay. Now the number three part of really, really good wholesaling areas that I absolutely love. This is where I find a lot of success. Shh, this can be a big secret, but find people bragging on Facebook group. And I'm not saying this to bring people down for bragging or doing these things, but I see a lot of wholesalers, like a lot. And I'm just telling you this because this is a true thing I've done. No guru will tell you about it. They don't like saying it. They think it's a dirty tactic. I think selling courses is dirty tactics. That's just me. I have found kids and I call them kids because they're 16, 17, 18 years old, even 23 years old my age, call myself kid, whatever you want to do. A lot of newbies will go out here and they'll become very successful very fast. And it's not because they're so good at wholesaling and they're just the man or the woman or the, the gangster out here doing it, but they struck gold in the perfect market, like the perfect market. I found a lot of guys and gals do that, a lot of teenagers. They're just in the right place at the right time, right? And they do drawing for dollars, reverse drawing for dollars, and they write all this stuff and they, 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 they hold their, their check, like I got my check. And on that check, I always look at it and it's got like the property address. And it's so funny because I'm like, why did you do that? You just gave to the entire wholesaling community in these Facebook group, what property you just hold. And now I know this kid that got a $40,000 assignment fee who knows nothing in this zip code. I'm gonna go after that zip code really hard. And this is another thing too. 
and this is, I hate to say it, this is very mean, but I absolutely love doing this, okay? Now, this is some, this is some, shh, this is some secrets I'm about, I'm about to drop on you. We're, we're, I'm going to show you how to steal your guru's top cash buyer. Now, most gurus are broke. There are some gurus that make a lot of money, so you can use them for them, but there's also a lot of gurus that do a couple deals. So let's break down how to steal your competition top cash buyer. Really easy to do. So when I was doing virtual wholesaling, there was one guru there in this unnamed market. I will not speak of this market. This is a market I did very well. I, I don't really ever talk about this market and I keep this market on the hush hush and I'm not going to mention the name because I still virtually wholesale me and my team here and we do deals. But there's one little prominent guru there and not a big guru, but who's making decent money, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year in assignment fees. Not a bad person, but I wanted to steal their cash buyers. I just want to go in there, just destroy them. And um, I wasn't able to make 400K in that specific market because I just had too many people. I was working my own market, other markets, but I was able to get a couple six figures that year uh, doing it. And this was about a couple years ago. Now I stole their top cash buyers and my competitions in that market's top cash buyers in under a week. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Number one, pretty simple. I started just calling cash buyers. And every single cash buyer I talked to, I asked them very specific questions. These are questions you get at freehosting.com. Literally, if you ask these specific questions, you'll be able to steal your cash buyers, uh, your top competition cash buyers pretty quick. You ask them, how many wholesalers have you bought from the last year? And they'll say, I bought from five wholesalers last year, about 30 properties. Now, most people say, okay, cool. Boom, 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 boom. Eh. Do not, uh, just stop right there. This is how you go even further. Which wholesaler did you buy from? Oh, I bought from Johnny Homebuyers or, you know, Johnny Appleseed. And like, God, I said this to myself. I'm like, Johnny Appleseed is the guru. Guess what I did? How many of those 30 properties you bought from Johnny Appleseed? I bought, I bought most of my, bought most of Johnny Appleseed's deal last year. So, huh. You bought most of Johnny Appleseed's deals left. Hmm. Guess what I did? I looked at Mr. Cash Buyer LLC on public records and I saw the 30 properties he bought for cash. I found exactly the 25 zips. Cause I asked the cash buyer for proof. I found the 25 properties he wholesaled to Johnny Apple. Johnny uh Johnny Appleseed wholesaled to him. Guess what I did? I found, oh my god, Johnny Appleseed only wholesales deals three to four zip codes in the city. Guess what Zach did? He started wholesaling those three to four zip codes, went from a deal every other month to two deals a month in that market. Boom. Right. And this is all by asking questions. I didn't go to Johnny Appleseed and be like, tell me your top markets. Cause he would say F you Zach and you know, walk away. I just did the next, but you know why cash buyers have no loyalty. Cash buyers have loyalty their, to their own money. That's why they will take, because plus of all, if you get their property information, their company information, they don't care. It's not Johnny Appleseed's deal. They have no loyalty. They're looking to buy from every wholesaler. They don't care. They'll cheat on their wholesaler seller to get another deal. They don't care. Okay. Like they legit don't care. Okay, about the whole wholesaling fighting because they, they 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 think competition's best because it undercuts people and gives gives them the best deals, right? Yeah, uh, I, I I just want you to understand that this is how you do it. A lot of gurus do not like it, but it's true. Cash buyers have no loyalty to your guru. They have no loyalty to me. They lo no loyalty to my cash buyer. They don't care. They'll sell you out in a second. Why I sell my deals to a lot of cash buyers. But once you start doing that, once you start selling your deals to those type of cash buyers, your, your competition is going to be upset at it. And Johnny, obviously, I don't think he even watches my stuff. But what I can tell you is just find people bragging Facebook groups, find the top wholesalers, start finding cash buyers that they're selling their deals to. Boom. It will work really good. Now let's bring it up one. One more notch. I want to bring it up one more notch because I'm feeling spicy today. Okay. I'm feeling spicy. And I really want to make a guru mad today. I really want to make a guru's day bad. I want to make your top wholesaler in your market day bad. I do. I'm saying that really nicely, really nicely and really confidently. And I'm not saying this be me or try to lose people money, but I'm going to do this so you get the best info dang possible. Now, this is going to be the final nail in the coffin for your top competition. So you, the people, can have the actual value because not every wholesale in your market watches me on YouTube. Not, no, not even close. There's only a select few amount of wholesalers that actually watch my content on a regular basis. So if you're watching this and you're in X market, you're going to be one of the few people that actually have access to this. Because I'll tell you, I talked to my peeps out in like Charleston, okay? South Carolina. There's only two or three people doing reverse rank for dollars in Charleston out of hundreds and maybe thousands of wholesalers. Not a lot of people actually taking action in those little places. Not little, but like decent places. So that means if you're watching this, you're going to have a huge upper hand advantage over your competition. In virtual wholesaling and regular wholesaling real estate. So let's bring down final nail in the coffin. Okay. And before I break down the final nail in the coffin, I'm going to uh, get you guys upset, riled up, but make sure you go to freelancing.com and exactly ask the right question. Cause if you do, if you do not ask the right questions, I do say you will get in a lot of trouble. You will not find the cash buyer. The cash buyer will not reveal the top places and you will get your results will not be as good. Go through freelancing.com. Make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video. If you did not subscribe,
subscribe. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't forget it. And let's get into it. Let's go to number four here. You were just going to ask the title companies. Now that this seems like, oh, what are we talking about? Here's another thing. Figure out the top title company for your competition or guru. Because a lot of them have pictures of the company in the title company. And they say, oh, I'm at ABC Home Title and we just bought Johnny's deal. And they do the little speaking thing. Oh, he went to ABC Title. Huh. Guess who else has no loyalty to a wholesaler? Title company. And the title company closes usually 100% of deals for your competition or the guru, whatever, okay? So if I know my competition only deals with ABC Title Company, I'm gonna call ABC Title Company up, ask them some questions, make sure they're wholesaling friendly, and then ask them a little nudge. Hey, ABC Cut Title Company, I'm excited to start doing wholesaling deals and using you as my sole title company. Make sure they know, hey, money, what are title companies? What are cash buyers? And what are realtors? All three of them. What are the only thing that they truly are loyal to? At the end of the day, their wallet. They're truly loyal to their wallet. It's a money game. Sorry to say it. Some people are different, but most of them are not. Title company wants you to pour in as many wholesaling deals as possible. They want all your competition together under one title company so they can make the most money off title insurance and all these things, okay? So when you ask your title company, hey, Mr. Title Company, before I start wholesaling, I, obviously I'm going to use you for everything. What areas have you found the best for wholesaling? What like zip codes in the city are the best for wholesaling? So I can start going after this so I can start getting deals and bringing them to you. I say that in that specific way. Oh, John, oh, you know, we have found that a lot of the really good investment properties and wholesaling deals are in this zip, this zip, and this zip. And they're going to give the Johnny Appleseed info, your other competition's top info. And they're going to give the secret intel, the top zip codes in your market. The title companies just keep giving them away because they want your money. Guys, if you got some value from that, let me know in the comment. Like I'm telling you, that is how you're going to do it. And if you do what I say, you're going to, first of all, number one, find the best cities for wholesaling real estate and find the best areas in those cities for wholesaling and that is going to give you the best success possible it's going to make your competition cry it's going to make your guru cry and it's going to make your wallet fat that is the point so guys that's my little uh talk today on exactly how to find the hottest zips in your virtual wholesaling market and the best virtual markets in general uh, if you got any value from this hit that like button subscribe and